Howdy, this is Phantom Strider. Let's talk Netflix. Since it first began, Netflix has been releasing more and more quality animation every year. But for every four beautiful, innovative cartoons we've gotten from them, one cheap, sellout, abysmal cartoon will pop up. So let's check out three more abysmal Netflix cartoons. And of course, if you do like these cartoons, that's great. It's just my silly personal opinion. And if you have your own thoughts on these cartoons, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Anyway, on to the countdown. Number three, Lego Friends. Well, that just sounds like a promising title for us, doesn't it? You can tell it's fun because it's Lego. And apparently, even if the girls look absolutely nothing like Lego, they're apparently still Lego Friends. Lego Friends is about a group of teenage girls that are not made of Lego. Seriously, what the hell? They go on such epic journeys as getting their hair done by a hair celebrity. Ugh, this is awful! But oh no! Their hairstyles aren't fashionable enough. Their hairstyles look fine, they look lovely. All with animation that looks like it belongs in a mobile app game that's trying to scam me. I keep feeling like a message box should be popping up every few seconds asking me to pay $10 to get twice the friendship points. Lego Friends isn't harmful to young girls in its message, but I can't help but feel like this show exists only to sell the Lego brand to girls without any Lego actually in the show. And is this really all the depth Lego is willing to offer younger girls? We're talking about a multi-million dollar company here. Is this cheap mobile app sitcom flash animation the best they can do? Does putting Lego in any sentence just suddenly make it marketable? Most episodes feel like a rushed sitcom episode combined with a lackluster consumerist teenage drama. Personally, I'd instead recommend teenage girls check out shows like Miraculous Ladybug, My Little Pony, or Kim Possible. These kind of shows credit young ladies with considerably more depth than their characters and stories. Lego Friends, on the other hand, has all the depth of a dried out puddle. And the number two. Where la 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 Where la la loopsy. These Frankenstein crafts table rejects look a bit like the Nightmare Mother from Coraline. How are these things at all kid friendly? La la lopsy was actually based on a toy line of ragdolls back in 2010. The world of Loopsy is made up of these creepy Polly Pocket nightmare lookalikes as they go about their humdrum tasks. Even in the trailer, the narrator sounds as uninvested as I am. These creative cuties are bringing the magic. No big deal, right? It's a very big deal. This guy is literally paid to make the show sound exciting, yet even he can't put enthusiasm into his voice. It's not exactly a hard story to follow. The story is that the La La Lopsies have fun in the La La Lopsy land. That is the entire summary of the story. They might do arts and crafts or stack up pancakes. How is this drab pile meant to pull kids' attention away from the mobile YouTube app on their phone? Interestingly, quite a lot of La La Loopsy ended up being uploaded to YouTube. I almost wonder if this cartoon was made purely to try and ape the creepy surprise egg Play-Doh nursery rhyme Spider-Man amalgamation of horror that is YouTube's algorithm. But instead, they seem to have dramatically failed to capture any attention at all. In fact, I actually seem to be the first critic to ever review this cartoon. Ever. Hooray! This is my greatest achievement since my drawing got stuck on the fridge in second grade. And the number one abysmal Netflix cartoon is Boss Baby, Back in Business. I'm probably alone on this opinion, but I just don't understand all the great reviews for this one. I personally found it abysmal, particularly for DreamWorks. I mean, they brought us Troll Hunters and Dragons Race to the Edge. Apparently, since one movie of an awkward, cringeworthy concept wasn't enough, we had to be given a full-on TV series of gurgling, wailing, vomiting infants? What is so wonderful for all ages about a TV series that makes me feel nauseous after watching half an episode? Despite this, I suppose the cartoon did take a lot of the good cartoon requirements. The animation is crisp and at the high standard of the DreamWorks TV series. And much of the voice acting is simply superb. 
More than puppies, more than kittens, babies get 10 times more love than the competition. When I hear Boss Baby's voice, I just think, wow. It's a tragedy that the talented J.P. Karliak is talking out of this one-trick pony infant joke. It just feels like a waste of talent. From as many episodes as I could stomach, the story seems to be that Boss Baby runs a secret baby-run organization called Baby Corp that tries to keep babies looking more cute than other animals. But since the movie was about dogs being cuter, the great twist in this series is that cats are now seen as cuter. Has that ever really been an issue that the dog gets priority over your child? Ooh, fun fact. Cats are actually seen as cute by humans as their facial proportions are quite similar to that of a human infant's. So the infant always kind of gets priority on the cuteness scale. Anyway, Boss Baby and Timmy work together as the brothers teach one another about business and family. They have to stop the evil villain, who is a weird vet cat man named Bootsy, who licks himself. Raised by kids! Who's trying to help cats be cuter? Okay, this is really stupid. I'm sorry, I just can't find gnawing, drooling, pooping, screaming infants funny or not supremely awkward to watch for 25 minutes straight. I admit, Timmy does bring a sense of relatability and compassion to his role, and the family message is serviceable, if a little cliche. But the problem is, is that nothing can save the fact that we're watching such a stupid concept. I was over the awkward trope of babies acting like adults about two seconds after it started in 1995. I personally find Boss Baby back in business, a abysmal Netflix cartoon. I should point out though that these bad cartoon lists from Netflix are getting tougher by the year, as even Netflix's lowest rated animated shows are miles more sophisticated, creative, and intelligent than shows like Peppa Pig or Dora the Explorer. On platforms like Netflix and Amazon Prime, animators are mostly helping to set that new high standard for modern animation. Frankly, if cartoons keep improving at this rate, my job will be done. But until then, if you like these cartoons, I'd love to know what makes them special to you. Feel free to leave your own thoughts on Netflix animation in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Welcome to the end of the video. Thank you for watching this far, by the way. I appreciate your time. I post a lot of stuff on Instagram nowadays, so if you'd like to take a look, check out links in the description. I'll catch you later.